so this thing has cost a lot of money and it's probably a little outside my scope of things I'd usually review but hey if someone throws you an option to check something out sometimes you just got to do it what's up YouTube Jason here with bite my bits and in today's video I am checking out a camera that is literally just completely impractical for most people like in like a daily basic streaming setup but that doesn't mean it's worthless or it's impractical for everybody it just means that it has a lot of features that people probably don't need and that camera I'm talking about is the Angicus Saber 4K I'm gonna say Angicus Angicus I may or may not be saying that right I'm just saying so the Angicus Saber 4K is a fully PTZ capable 12 times optical zoom 72.5 field of view 38 20 by 2160 at 30 frames per second camera. It can connect via Ethernet and does support power over Ethernet. Has an HDMI and SDI, a USB 3.0, and even serial controls for a remote. And supports full 4K resolution with H.264 or H.265 encoding. So when it comes to actually pulling the video from this thing, you can literally just like connect and directly stream via a network ethernet, or you can hook it up to HDMI or USB 3.0, SDI. I mean, there's a lot of options. This is just one of those cameras that just gives you a lot of flexibility and really works with whatever setup you're trying to do. The camera is easy to put anywhere you want to. It has rubber feet, or you could use a standard tripod mount to do something like put it on a tripod or maybe mount it to a wall or a ceiling or something like that. For streaming via network, you can select either a mainstream or a substream via RTSP, and it has a somewhat questionable full web UI support that you can just log into the camera and make changes as you desire. If you can get it to work right, or if you want to get it to work right, I'll explain that in a second. So again, I'm going to come right out and say that this is not a normal webcam, something that a normal streamer would buy to hook up their computer. It's not like this thing I have on the top of my monitor right there. No, it is complete overkill, in my own personal opinion, for something like that. And I say that because the price, at least at the time I was checking it out, was fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars. So you know, holy bananas. But since it's not meant for that, you might ask yourself, what is it meant for? One of the videos that I actually saw using a similar camera was a church setup where they have LCD screens or projectors and it's like a PTZ camera can look at the crowd or look at the pasture or whatever and then, you know, display that on a screen above. Basically giving them the option to move around with the PTZ and have something that's just built into the wall or built into the ceiling and really just kind of out of the way but still pretty high quality. And that's something that I can say. And yes, I do know that I just do not have the required stuff to test this thing to its fullest potential, but the quality on this is pretty impressive. I'll show you some demonstration footage that I took in my backyard that actually allows me to look across the pond, look at houses across the street, utilize the PTZ moving around back there and seeing how smooth it is, how clear it is, and how well the auto mode works on it. See, the camera itself actually has a bunch of things built in to help your image, things like noise reduction, wide dynamic range, auto sharp, auto focus, zooming, all kinds of things that you could do. And while you can change these manually, even with the little remote here, which I'll talk about that in a second, I actually found that the auto mode is actually really reliable. So for whatever reason, if I was setting something up or somebody's doing a presentation of any kind and I wanted to, you know, keep focus on them, I would have a lot of confidence in something like this to keep everything looking sharp. Another option or a use case for a camera like this is it's easy plug and play for things like Skype or Microsoft Team, conference calling, things that you would be setting up in a professional world, in a corporate world, where you need clarity, you need to be able to move around if you want to, and you just want something that plugs into something and it works and it has a bunch of different options to work with a bunch of different scenarios. I mean, that's really what this thing comes down to is its flexibility. You can display video out of the HDMI, the USB, the SDI, all at the same time, which is actually pretty impressive. The only drawback here is that even though this is a 4K camera, you actually can't use 4K on like the USB. You can only actually see the 4K via IP or HDMI, which is why right now I'm, I'm recording this in 1080. It's a 4K camera, but you know, this video is 1080p. And playing along with the whole versatility thing, usability 
is the remote. And I gotta say, this thing is actually pretty good. The camera itself has dual IR receiver, and this remote has a lot of different options, along with being able to control up to four of these cameras all at the same time. One little side note here, I cannot get this little blue button I can't get it to turn anything off. I mean, it makes the light blink, but it doesn't actually stop the stream. So this kind of looks like a mute button for the camera. I mean, it has a camera with a little strike through it. I would think that it would stop the stream, but uh, as far as I can tell, it does not, even though I haven't tested every port behind the camera. I just haven't got it to work yet. But you can still do things like zoom in or zoom out. I really have to stress, I mean, the automatic mode, let me give you this example. You know, I'm definitely way more blown out than what I was before, but that's pretty good. I mean, it adjusted pretty well to that change. You can do it. I mean, there is like no light on my face right now. Okay, that's actually an interesting low light test. So I'm gonna be kind of curious to see how grainy this footage is because that's kind of a, an Achilles heel to a lot of camera uh, sensors out there is that when you get low light, you start getting a bunch of grain. So I kind of wonder how this is gonna look. So the auto mode really just kind of wins the day and the remote itself is pretty versatile. As I stated before, this camera's a little bit outside of what I normally would review. It's definitely way outside of my capabilities. Like I don't have anything that's gonna capture SDI or even take SDI connection. I don't even have a 4K HDMI capture card, so I can't even take 4K from the camera and record and give you the example on that. I was kinda hoping that it would support that via USB, but um, you know, my fault for not researching that first. But still, even though with my limited testing capabilities as far as being able to test everything behind it, there are a couple things that I was able to find out that I think if you are looking at this camera, you should note. And the biggest thing that I think that I should tell anybody who's considering this camera is the web interface is just horrible. I mean, it technically works, kinda. Personally, I actually couldn't get the web interface preview video to load. I used multiple machines trying to access it, but I could not get the RTPS like preview screen to work on the web interface. So maybe it's just me or my network. I am running everything through a PFSense router, so maybe that's blocking something. I don't know. I didn't test it on a different you know network, but that's what I ran into. And really, it took a lot to get to that point because the web interface is straight out of 1995. Maybe not that old, but it's pretty bad. And I'm talking to get this thing to work, I had to load Internet Explorer. <sighs> On top of Internet Explorer, I had to make, I had to make my web browser so unsafe that Internet Explorer was freaking out on me. It was like, whoa, don't go anywhere on the internet, change your settings, don't do this. Just to get this thing to load. And they, they tell you this in the user manual, like you have to disable and do all these things to get this camera to work. So, you know, there's that. Seriously though, Andrew Kiss, I know you're probably gonna see this video. You really need to work on your web interface. Seriously, that's like my biggest flaw with this camera is that web interface. It is just horrendous. The quality's on point though. I mean, this thing can zoom across the pond like it's nothing. I was able to look across the street, I could see you know, all the backyards from, I don't know how far away I am, but 12 times zoom is amazing. Even looking to the next door neighbor's yard trying to zoom in on a tree. I mean, a little, little baby tree. But zooming in on that little tree, it was just super clear. Like everything you point this thing at is super clear. The center on this, the quality on this, everything is actually really, really good. Something you come to expect from a camera in this price range. But the web interface, holy bananas, Batman. That thing is terrible. You need an update. Get on that. It's a software update. Just pay somebody to do that. You got this. Another thing I want to say is that the PTZ on this, then this thing has a dual motor thing going on, so it's it's really smooth. Being able to pan, tilt, and even zooming is actually really smooth too. Everything is pretty smooth, except sometimes when you get really super far into something, like, like at your maximum zoom, I notice that even though you hold the button down, sometimes it goes a little bit, and then it stops, and you have to make it go again. And then sometimes when I zoom in, it'll just go the whole time, and it won't you know, mess up. But when it does work and when it's not fully zoomed out, it works all the time. It's butter smooth. It's easy to use. I mean, it's it's really good for what it is. I mean, I could really see something like this used in a conference room just because you can pan and tilt, you know, throughout the room and focus on somebody or something if you want to, like a presentation or something, it would be extremely useful. I mean, that 12 time optical zoom is 
that's a pretty stout zoom. I'd show you like the pan and tilt, but you know, I have a camera there or I have light there. So it kind of gets in the way, Got a little ring light. I mean, so hey, huge shout out to Angicus for allowing me to borrow this camera long enough to film this review. So I'm gonna send this back to him. Thank you for letting me check it out. It was very interesting. And I'm sorry I don't have more supporting hardware to give the best or most accurate representation of the quality. I just, I, I need more hardware on my end to record specifically HDMI. So, you know, my bad, but hey, thank you. If you guys wanna know more information about this camera, I will of course post links in the description down below. As always, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a good day.